You know, when you learn the secrets to hitting your irons flush, it becomes really easy. You look forward to hitting that mid iron out of the fairway because you know you're gonna hit a good one and most of your playing partners are gonna struggle hitting those shots. Now I've put together three of my all time best videos that are gonna share with you some of those real secrets to hitting crisp irons. Let's go and get started. All great players pull the club and players that really struggle push the club. Now let me give you an example of this. What I usually see with players when they start their downswing, that right elbow starts to pop out they start to push the club with the right hand, pushing it this way, pushing it with the right shoulder. That causes that club to get steeper in the downswing. And then from there, we're pushing it all the way through contact. We're looking from face on. We're trying to accelerate this thing by pushing it through toward the target. Now, that's not a very efficient way to make it happen. And if you do that, your tens are gonna get that club steep and then stand up out of the shot, flip, so that you don't have very much lag, you're casting it, all those problems that just drive us nuts. Well, here's what's going on. If I take this club and it's lagging behind, so the club's head is over here, I'm gonna pull straight up on the shaft and that club is gonna shoot forward like that. Now, if I took the club and put it the other way and I pulled up on it, it would shoot backwards. So both times I'm pulling up, the club is shooting in different directions based on where the club is and if I'm pushing versus pulling. So in the golf swing, what I see a lot of players doing is instead of pulling up and leading the way, letting this club kind of whip through there. What they're trying to do is get the club in front of their hands and push the club through there. Not very efficient. It's almost like I'm flipping and I'm pushing the head through contact, which is why most golfers don't have very much lag and very much forward shaft lane. So long story short, let me go ahead and show you the right way to do this. Now, if you imagine again on that, that example where I'm pulling up, when I'm pulling in this direction, that club is kicking to want to line up with the direction that I'm pulling. Now on the golf swing, that's lag. So if I'm here with a bunch of lag, I'm kind of pulling down in this direction. And I'm constantly pulling slightly in front of the golf club, so it's constantly wanting to whip forward to accelerate the club. As I come down farther in the swing, now I'm clearing my body out of the way. So here I can pull up in this direction. And really what makes a big difference there is my left hip and my left shoulder are coming up and out. My right, my right hand is feeling like it's pulling here, so it's actually pulling up on the grip this direction, going that way as I'm coming through contact. So I'm not hitting or pushing down. I'm actually got some lag and I'm pulling this grip back up with my right hand to get the club to whip on through there. So what I want you to do to feel this is just swing the club four or five times with just your right hand and feel like you pull up on the club just right as it's lagging behind there, and it's gonna to wanna to kick forward like that. It's gonna whip through contact like that. That's that snap that you wanna have at impact. Now I'm gonna make my downswing, and I wanna feel the same thing. I'm gonna feel that same club wanting to whip through there, and I have to move my body a little open, get the club kinda of lagging behind to make that happen. You're almost gonna to wanna to feel like this club, as you do that, it just kinda of flies away from your body. It's being pulled out away from you. You get great extension through the shot when that happens. And that's what you wanna feel like if you're gonna be consistent. That's the only way to really be consistent in golf. So let's hit one like that and we're gonna see, I'm gonna smooth really, I'm gonna swing really smooth and let's see what kind of club head speed I get. So I'm not gonna feel like I go at it hard. I'm gonna be really smooth, but I'm gonna get that same feeling that club just whips through contact because I'm pulling on it rather than trying to push the golf club toward the golf ball. There we go. Nice little draw. Felt like I barely swung at all 196 yards with that six iron. So pretty daggone good there. Now that whipping action is what allows you to be consistent. If I'm pushing, there's no whipping action. The club is, I'm having to steer and guide the club head. The cool thing about this, I can do the exact same thing, except I can go ahead and do down the line. So when I'm looking at this, it's gonna also help me to get that draw. That exact same idea. So when we're looking from this angle, imagine that club is inside my hands, shallowed out. Now as I pull my hands, it's wanting to kick out toward the golf ball. As I come in here, my hands start to work back up and to the left as my body opens up, my hips, my shoulders open up, my hands go back that way. So you imagine my hands are kind of on this plane of glass and I'm getting my hands working back up that plane of glass as the club is working down it. So even, the, even though the club is swinging from the inside and swinging inside out, the hands are working back up and in. And that's so confusing because most players, when they try to hit out more, they have to push it. So I'm trying to push the club out 
and my hands are still working out, that's not going to be very consistent. I want to pull my hands in and have the club work out. So I'm basically doing this. I'm getting the club to the inside. I'm opening and letting that club shoot from the inside. So you'll notice my hands start to work back up and in slightly as that club still works down and out. That's really consistent. If I try to push my hands that way, then it doesn't really work that great. So again here, I'm gonna start this one a little bit to the right, get a nice little draw. I'm gonna feel like I swing just mildly more aggressive. Not hard, very, very smooth. I'm letting the club whip action, move the club head. I'm not gonna do it with a lot of muscular force. Let's try that out. So I know that ball is gonna turn over from right to left because I got the club to the inside. I let the momentum of it work that ball back over right to left. Again, 195 yard six iron, swinging really smooth. Man, I take that all day long. When I look at the better players, they're all releasing the club in a very similar way. They're coming into impact with shaft lean, and then just after impact, they're releasing this club roughly about 45 degrees out in front. When I say the release, I'm talking about where this club is splitting my forearms. When I look at players that struggle with consistency and making solid contact, at impact, there's not a lot of shaft lean, and that club is releasing just in front of the ball, maybe 10, 20 degrees, somewhere in that area. So the secret to releasing the club correctly is how we're using our wrists as we come into contact. If I'm flipping or early releasing, you're gonna see this lead wrist is really breaking down through impact. And you can see this trail wrist is going from a bent back position to kind of a scoopy palm up kind of position as I'm coming through. And if you imagine there's a wall right here, I'd be just sticking that club right into the wall in front of me. When we look at better players, that lead wrist is coming in in a flat or even bowed position with some players. That trail wrist is extended back. It's almost like the club travels up a wall that's in front of them. That's the visual that we want to have. So if you look at it from this angle, if I'm early releasing, that club is going to stick into the wall and the club's going to go more that way around my body. If I'm using my wrist correctly, I'm going to have flat to bowed lead wrist, extended back trail wrist at contact, and then after contact, that club's gonna travel more this way, and like there's a wall in front of me, it's like it's gonna travel up a wall. The momentum of the club is gonna go up instead of around me like this. So I have a great drill for you that's gonna help you to get this proper feeling as we come into contact. So if you grab an alignment stick, you can just place it on the grip like this, and we're just gonna start out with some short, slow practice swing and some short, slow shots, getting this proper feeling at first. I find that a lot of people when they're training things, they try to do it in a full speed, full swing right away, and things are just moving too fast. It's gonna to be too difficult to do. So we always wanna start out with some slower swings, some shorter swings, and then build our way up from there. So if I'm doing this correctly, what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna have my shaft lean, and this stick is not gonna hit my body. If I early release, and flip the club, right? I break down my wrist, it's going to hit me in the body here. And then if I have this feeling of going up the wall through contact, the stick is gonna to continue to avoid me and that stick's gonna point down, right? If I have this wrong feeling through contact, it's gonna, even if I have a little bit of shaft lean at contact, it's still gonna hit me later. So the idea here is for this stick to never touch your side. If you're coming in with shaft lean, and then you're getting that club, you're not breaking down those wrist angles, and you're getting that club to work up the wall, like we talked about, then that stick's never, ever going to hit you. So start out with some short, slow swings, and when you're going up the wall, what you're going to feel here, if I show you from this angle, what you're going to feel is this club, as a, as a right-hander, is going to work counterclockwise up the wall. And you can see if I do that, I'm coming around, I'm getting the stick pointed down, I'm in this umbrella finish as I'm coming through. So like I said, let's start out with some short, slow practice swings where I'm doing this. And what I'm imagining here is I'm just hitting little chip shots, right? So I'm coming through, I'm getting that stick to travel up the wall. It's not touching me, it's still not touching me. So if I do a few of those and I'm able to do it, I'm getting my wrist angles working properly, I'm not getting that stick to touch me at any point. Now I'm ready to hit the ball. But again, I'm gonna go short and slow with this initially to get this proper feeling. So let's try to hit one here and not allow the stick to touch me. So as I came through, it just barely touched me at the end. So what I would do after that 
is I would exaggerate it even more. I'd really do some more practice swings where I really exaggerate this club. And this is an exaggeration. If I'm coming in like this and the club's going out like that, I mean, that's crazy exaggerated, but that's what you want to feel is happening. Really feel like this club, like there's a wall in front of you right here and you can't hit that wall. You got to get this club to travel up the wall as you're coming through. And you can see as I do that, that club releases way, way out in front. I never actually probably releases if you're looking on video because it's super exaggerated, but that's what we need to feel to be able to do this in the long run. So let's try another one here. Let's see if I can get it to make sure that it doesn't touch me. At the very last second on the last one, it hit me right down here. So for me, I'm not ready to move on to the next step to make it go faster because I'm not even able to do it yet at the slow and shorter swing. So let's give it another try here. I'm gonna really, really try to exaggerate this one. So on that one, I saw that one shoot out really, really low. I mean, this is a short, slow swing and that ball still came off like a rocket because I was able to get some really good shaffling. I never felt this stick come around and hit me. Now at that point and that point only, am I ready to start building this up to longer and longer swing? So work through that with this drill and I'm telling you, if you work on this every day for a little bit every day on the range, you're gonna to start to be able to do this faster and longer, faster and longer, and eventually it's gonna end up in your swing. Lag, it's one of the absolute best things you can have in your golf swing. And what I've found through practicing this myself over the years is that I can make an almost effortless golf swing. And as long as I get that wrist angle to set and then released, it's like there's a, a snap of power coming through contact and I can swing really easy and not very much effort at all and still get a ton of distance out of these shots. So let's go ahead and just do a nice little easy one with tons of lag and see how it goes. So you see there, not a very aggressive backswing, just not kind of nice free flowing, nothing really happening there, but I got a lot of lag, set that, and then it just kind of released and whipped through contact with a lot of speed. Once I learned to develop that the right way, Man, my distance just went off the charts. So that one probably carried a little over 200 yards with a seven iron. And most of that has become coming from the very efficient way that I stored energy up with lag and then just let it take off through contact. Now there's a problem with this. Most players have been taught lag the wrong way. And it actually doesn't matter what you do with your wrist angles. If you don't get this one thing correct in the golf swing that I'm gonna teach later in this video. First, let's talk about the fundamentals of lag. Then I'm gonna share with you that one thing that just ties it all in together. It'll be like a light bulb goes off. So the fundamental here is, I don't wanna ever max out my lag until about halfway into the downswing. So when I'm making my backswing, I want a very little wrist set. I wanna feel like my hands are wide away from my body and almost like my thumb is down toward the ground here. So if I exaggerated this, it would look something like this. Like the club is like lagging back behind my hands here. And then as I go into the, down, the backswing, I don't wanna have this fully set in the backswing. I wanna have very little wrist set in the backswing. It's not until the downswing that this is gonna be sharpening up. And I'll reach that maximum angle about halfway in the downswing. That's one of the big keys there. If you pick it up, set it fully, it's gonna go. And, and when I tell you later on in this video, it's gonna make complete sense of why it's impossible to get it fully set and really max it out have a great looking lag swing. Now, the second piece is the shallowing of the club, this way. As I shallow the club, that can make a much sharper looking angle. Here is the club straight up and down vertical. I'm gonna take this club, I'm not gonna set it anymore this way. This is locked, this is as much as I can go. But watch when I turn it back, look how the shallower I go, the more it looks. So it's a bit of an optical illusion, but the shallower you go, the more lag it appears like you have. Now that's very big advantage. I wanna get this club really shallow here so that I can turn on the power coming through contact instead of having to back off of it. That's the second fundamental. We have to make sure that we shallow it out, we give it time to get flatter before we release it or it's just never gonna work again. Now finally, the third piece, and we've all heard this, we need to make sure that we release it. We need that snap, that real big snap of speed coming at contact. Now most players get that snap of speed at the top. What I, saying, what I said before is most players will set it quick, the club gets fully set up here, and then it starts firing right from the top. So they set it too early. 
When I fire from the top, that kicks the club more vertical like this, so now you're too vertical. We're not doing the second thing that I talked about. And then most importantly, no matter what you do, if you go fast from the top, it's impossible to get lag. Let me demonstrate this for you. I'm gonna over accelerate my hands. So I'm gonna take my hands there. I'm actually gonna split my hands apart and I'll show you the slow motion of this too. But I'm gonna yank down on this club absolutely as hard as I can. My wrists are gonna be perfectly loose. What's gonna happen is you're gonna see me get a bunch of lag up here and then all of a sudden you're gonna see this club flip past my hands. And the reason is because I've over accelerated early and the club overtakes my hands and arms. So let me go ahead and try this out. I'm trying not to hurt myself here. Right, so there, I didn't feel like I threw my hands and arms at all. All I did is feel like I yanked down on this club, and you can see it even when I'm doing it there. I yanked straight down on this club, and as it accelerated, it got sharper, and then my hands couldn't keep going. I ran out of speed with my hands because I've over-accelerated them, and then the club just flies past my hands. So here's the real secret. You can feel this in a golf swing. I'm going to show you how to get too much lag at impact now. I want you to go ahead and just take a little swing back to here. Have this club at about a 45 degree angle. And then I want you to really accelerate your hands and arms toward the target. Now you'll notice when I do that, I actually increase my lag, right? So watch when I just rip my hands toward the target. Look, the club almost flies back up and hit me. I had to watch out, about hit me in the, the belt area there. That would have been good. So if you really yank it forward, this thing's wanting to kick back up and increase your lag. When I slow it down now, which is what I did there, I yanked the club down, it got lag. As soon as it slowed down, all of a sudden it started to flip past my hands. So what is this telling me from a physics standpoint? What it's saying is, when you're accelerating quickly, you're gonna increase lag. And when you decelerate, so again, I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna accelerate and then I'm gonna throw the brakes on when my hand gets over the top of the golf ball it just flies right on past. So it's less about what you're doing with your wrists and your arms. It's more about how you're putting force into the club and making that gradual throughout the downswing. Here's what I want you to feel like. I want you to feel like you actually start down the opposite. I want you to feel like you start down by casting a little bit and going really slow. Bear with me, it's gonna be crazy drill, but I promise you this will work. Cast a little bit, go really slow, wait until you get down here and then feel like it really accelerates as you come through contact. What you're gonna find is with that feeling, you'll get rid of that over acceleration from the top. So I want it to look just like this. No wrist set from the way down. And then as you're coming through contact, feel like you really get the hands going forward and that club is just gonna kick back like the one that almost hit me in the belt. Kick back and I have tons of shaft lean as I'm coming through there. So basically my hands are going Slow, 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 and then they're really taking off at the bottom. And my club is going cast, 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 cast as much as I can with slow hands, and then it's gonna kick back this way at the bottom of the swing. Now that's the feeling. It's not gonna seem right, I promise you, you're not gonna feel like that's right. But watch when I do that feeling, that same exact feeling here on a full swing, you'll see just how much lag that I have. Let's give it a whirl. There we go, tons of lag on that one. And again, the club's just slinging through there because I'm accelerating late. Another one flew almost 200 yards with a six iron, very happy with that. But there's still one problem with this. You see, when you get more lag, this is the thing with all swing changes that I've found, is that players will get a fantastic new feeling. They'll get tons of lag in the downswing. All of a sudden, this club is just wanting to fly back like this, and you almost can't even stop it from doing that. But you're not used to it. And when that club gets more lag, it's gonna be more open here. This face is gonna be pointing more up toward the sky. Now you have to learn the pro wrist movements that are gonna allow you to bow this left wrist, get this awesome angle between the right wrist, and then release that on through there. If you don't do that, the face is just gonna to be too open. So this club's gonna be wanting to work back like this. You're gonna have all this late lag, and then you're gonna block it over to the right. You've got the right acceleration. You've got the club wanting to do the right things now but we gotta get the face doing the right thing to match up with that. This is a totally new feeling that you're gonna have. So I'm gonna play a preview of a video that's gonna show you exactly how to do that called the tennis racket drill. All you need to do is go ahead and click the card that pops up on the screen, or if you don't see that card, don't worry. Go down to the description below and click the link there and you'll get instant access to it. You pair those two things up. You get this club just wanting to shoot back with a ton of lag 
Then you learn to square it up properly with the face. It's like you can't miss. All you got to do is just turn on through there, through impact, like you want to. And man, you're going to hit some really well compressed shots. Best of luck and I'll see you in the tennis racket drill. Good player problems. We're going to talk about shallowing that club shaft out as we're starting down as we're doing this rotating of the face that we worked about worked on in the last video. As we start this downswing, what you'll see with, with basically all of the, the top players is instead of coming kind of over the top and letting the hands come out away from their body, letting the club come out away from their body, again coming down steep into the ball and then having to open up, kind of fillet open the face and add loft to it, the flattening of the shaft should happen as soon as we start down. So as we start this downswing, what we want to have happening here you can imagine that if I draw a line from the hosel of my club up through my right elbow, that's my swing plane line, my elbow plane. As I go to the top of the swing, I'm going to be slightly above that. And then as I start down, I want my hands to start to shallow out. I want the club to shallow out inside of this elbow plane. And at the same time, 